what we're saying to everyone. If you have to have a perfectly healthy body before you feel good, you're in trouble. If you have to have every single meal you eat be perfect in every single way before you can be happy, you're not ever going to be happy. If your kids have to behave and be joyful in every moment, you're not ever going to be happy. In other words, you've got to give up the need to control the uncontrollable and discover your vibrational latitude to connect with your inner being who is always joyful, who always loves, who always knows, who always understands your value, who always understands the value of others. You have to train yourself into that frequency when it's easy. And if you train yourself and if you pay attention to it when it's easy and practice it when it's easy, it will never be hard for you again, you see. But you've got to understand. You've got to understand the laws of the universe. You've got to understand vibration. You've got to understand what your emotions mean. And you've got to care. Most of all, you've got to care how you feel. If we were standing in your physical shoes, we would make a decision. We would motivate ourselves even. We would say, I am not willing to put up with negative emotion not for very long I'm, I'm just not going to do it now that doesn't get to anywhere but it is a sort of decisive point we just want you to find a way of making the focusing on the good feeling things be something that you do for the joy of it not for the benefit of it not for the manifestational benefit of it you're putting it in the box because it felt good to find it. It felt good to think about it. It felt good to see the color in that rug, whether I ever buy it or not. It felt good to imagine that rug on my floor, whether it ever is on my floor or not. It felt good to look at the curves on that woman's body if I ever make love to her or not. It felt good to look at the curves on that woman's body if it ever becomes my body or not. It felt, it felt good to see that blue sky if, if, I, if I never see a sky that blue or not, it feels good. It feels good and that's why I do. It feels good now. It feels good now in real time. I'm using this creation box as my excuse right now to see the world as source sees it. Because when I use something as my excuse to see the world as source sees it, now I'm in alignment with source. And now every cell in my body is vibrationally being allowed the fullness of what it requests. Oh, that's another thing we're talking about. So we've been talking about this vortex all day. This vortex, this vortex, this vortex. Do you know that all of the trillions of cells of your body, each and every one of them has a vortex? And so the cell gets a little out of whack because you ingested something or you drank something or you, or you bumped up against some bacteria or something. And so the cell receives it, knows what it doesn't want, knows what it does want, throws it into the vortex. Do you know that you've got trillions of cells putting things into a vortex that is creating a physical body, a cellular body that is like your physical body? And that when you are doing things like playing creation box games or, or having a massage and basking in the deliciousness of it or looking for reasons to feel good or playing the wouldn't it be nice if game, that you are offering no resistance whatsoever and you are allowing each and every one of those beautiful little cells to live the dream reality that they have put there? Seriously, we're not kidding you. Your cells know how to create a perfect body. But if you're ornery, you're not letting them have the body that they've put into their vortex. And then you're sick, you see. But if you could get happy for a moment, you'd stop disallowing your cells their virtual reality experience and you would be well immediately. That's what healing is. Healing is the lifting of resistance and the allowing of the alignment with the real experience that is in the vortex. You see, if, if there is something that calls you, Esther realizes that this is the magic to Jerry's happy life. He just does what he wants to do. <laughs> and there's enough of what he wants to do that's really meaningful to him that he just keeps himself in a really happy place. And so that's what we want for all of you. We want you to get to the place where you just do what you want to do. We want you to get to the place where, but, but, but just doing what you want to do sometimes involves making what you're doing be something that you want to do. In other words, you, you look at it in a way that aligns you. For example, let's say that you're washing dishes and you don't really want to be washing dishes. You'd rather be working on your blog or you'd rather be doing something that's more inspirational. But the dishes 
need to be washed and you're the one that's doing them. So now you could stand there and you could feel resentment that somebody else is off doing what they want to do while you're washing dishes or you could feel resentment that you can't yet afford somebody to wash your dishes or you could feel resentment that you didn't get organized enough to have someone take care of it or you could feel resentment that you don't have a dishwasher that's washing your dishes. That's all out of the vortex stuff. In other words, just like with the woman who has pain in her body who could feel hope or who could feel fear, you can be in the act of washing the dishes and you could be resentful or you could be having fun with it. You could be resentful or you could be making the best of it. You could be appreciating the warm water. You could be appreciating the detergent that is making your dishes shine and be germ-free. You could appreciate the lovely dishes. You could appreciate the dexterity in your... In other words, there's always, no matter what's happening in your moment in time, there are positive aspects and negative aspects. So no matter what activity you're involved in, there are more leaning toward the vortex thoughts and more leaning away from the vortex thoughts. So Jerry and Esther have, have a, a beautiful new house in Texas now that is ready to live in after many, many years of coming about. But they don't really ever care if they live in it because they're out here with you and this is what's ringing their bell. But there is a man who has brought it all to fruition recently. Over the last four or five months, he brought a team of people from California, and they've, they've been living in, in one of the buildings there. Esther says it's like Snow White and the Twelve Dwarfs. So their little beds are all lined up in the, in the center building. And they've been bringing this place into a beautiful state of being. And Jerry and Esther saw it briefly and then left, and now it has evolved much more since they were there. And so Eric calls frequently and describes to them what's happening. And the thing that is so interesting is that he just loves the process. And, and nothing is ever unmanageable or out of sync. He just loves the process. And so he's always talking about the joyful work and how and the creative work and the teamwork of these men coming together and the good ideas that are being born out of it. And Jerry and Esther are realizing they're not creating a house to live in. This is a, a whole world that's being created and all of these people are dancing in this world and, and they are just a sort of remote, remote part of it because it's their dream that these people are bringing to realization. But... The house is so much bigger than some place to live. Right. You see what we're getting at? Mm -hmm. it, it, and, and Eric has taught them both the, the joy of the imagery. Esther will say, say it again, Eric. <laughs> what, what? Tell, tell me about the walkway again. What, what? The one that goes off the back porch. Tell me about that walkway. And then he will use words like meanders. It meanders, and you discover, and, and you feel, and it's exciting, and comfortable, and beautiful. You see? Mm -hmm. They're not walking on it. They're not smelling it. They're not licking it. They're not seeing it. They're, they're just feeling it. They're just, they're just feeling. They're just feeling the culmination of it. But what he's conveying is far more than an object that he's viewing. He's conveying the creation of it. He's conveying how it felt to envision it. He's conveying how it felt to hear what Jerry and Esther asked for and then how to create it. He's conveying how it felt to, to gather the people who had the ability and to gather the resources. He makes piling up a big pile of gravel sounds delicious, you say, because it's part of the creative process. And, and that's what we're wanting you all to begin to get a sense of. We, we want you to feel, we want you to feel the, the creation of that contrast that caused you to put things into a vibrational reality that a law of attraction is massaging into realness that you can feel now and live in later. But feel now. And, and live in later, but feel now. And live in later, or not, but feel now. What difference would it make if Jerry and Esther never spent a day in that house? It all would have been worth it for the feeling along the way. It would have all been worth it just for the five months of description that Eric's been offering them. It would have been worth it just for that five months of his description. 
more joy experienced as a result of pondering that, not living it, not living the manifestation of it, pondering it from a distance and feeling the bigness of it. You get me? As you, as you spend enough time following your inspiration that you are in alignment most of the time, before you know it, you're feeling good no matter what you're doing. In other words, you can be driving, as Jerry and Esther were driving across the country just now, they were on the East Coast. It is so beautiful this time of year. Everything was so green. And as we were driving across the Midwest, it was extra beautiful because of so many rains. And, and so there's a tendency to now want to compare. Well, I only want to drive across the most beautiful parts of the nation. Well, that's just not very logical. You're going to drive across the nation. You're going to see a lot of different things. And some of it is going to be more pleasing to the eye than others of it. Some of the freeways are a blissful experience. They're smooth. They're wide. The lanes are wide open. Some of the freeways are a bumpy, terrible mess. Some of them are under construction. Some of them, the barricades are so close that getting the monster bus down them is not really the easiest thing in the world to do. So what do you do? You do, do you let the conditions that you're living in dictate the way you feel, or do you become so flexible in your mind that you can find something to feel good about regardless of what the current reality is? And that's what we're talking about. So many people just they insist that current reality keep morphing to please them, and it won't do it. That's why the older you get, the more you complain if you are expecting the current reality to morph to please you. You have to find the decision within yourself that you are going to find pleasing thoughts. You're going to follow your bliss. You're going to look for it, and sometimes you have to look harder for it than others. Sometimes you have to be more determined to find it than others. Sometimes it's just easy. And those times that it is easy, they spoil you. Spoil you in the literal sense that they make you lazy about your own focus. You start putting in things that feel good when you think about them. Okay. There's a distinction. There's a distinction because right. if you're putting in stuff that's missing, now you've messed up your creation box. Okay. Now it's needy. <laughs> okay. okay. So what you're putting in the creation box are things that feel good when you think about them. That's, that's what you put in there. You put rainbows in there, and you put good-feeling bodies in there, and you put blissful states of being in there, and you put magnificent things that make you feel good when you look at them. In other words, do you need to possess the, the magnificent Picasso in order to appreciate it, or can you just appreciate it? The answer is easy. Do whatever... You want with the box, it feels good. <laughs> Carry it around, show it to other people, <laughs> organize it, put it in alphabetical order. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What what matters is that what matters is that what matters is that this this is pretty, I want it in my box. This is pretty too, I want that in my box too. That I don't care so much about that one. That <laughs> In other words, I yeah. want it in my box. I want that in my box. I want happy grandchildren in my box. I want, I want, a, I want a cooperative government who understands that it is a diverse span of interests and beliefs who have the ability to cooperatively work together to bring the best out of everybody. I want that. I want that in my board. I, I, in my vortex, I want, I want technology that solves the current issues of the day. I want, I, I put that in my box. I don't have to figure out how to get there. I just want it. I'm, I'll, I'll, whatever that looks like, I'll put it in my box. If it looks like clear water, oh, here's a picture of clear water. If it looks like happy, oil-free dolphin, oh, here's one. I'll put that in my box. In other words, what, whatever, whatever makes me feel good when I see it. I'll put that in my box, and I'll put enough of it in my box. I'll put such an avalanche of good-feeling things in my box that I'll need a lot of boxes. And so, and, and so I'll just have somebody pick, pick, pick them up and put them someplace else. And, in other words, you'll have more boxes than you, than you really want, and maybe you'll be able to let go of the boxes in time. Just for the next week, do the creation box and the book of positive aspects and transform your world. Just do it. For the fun.